Hello again and welcome to the 140k Imperial Guard Tactics video. Now before we get into today's video I'd like to say a big thank you to Brendan Bourne for sending in some absolutely fantastic pictures of his Catatan Jungle Fighter Army. Really really like this army, it's got a good mix of different models which always adds a little bit of realism to a, an army. Not every soldier is identical, they do have, uh, even in large infantry formations, they do, you do have to try and get some individualism in there. And uh, I think you've really achieved that, Brendan. So thank you for sending these pictures in. Really like the scheme on the tanks as well. If anyone else has got any cool pictures they want me to use in my videos, please, please, please post them on my Facebook page. There will be a link down in the description below. And if possible, I will use them in my videos. Now, another thing I want to say before we get into today's video is... A few weeks ago, maybe a month ago, I announced on Facebook and I did a little announcement on the Patreon giveaway, although I appreciate not everyone has me on Facebook and also not everyone uh, looks at the Patreon giveaway videos. So I'm doing a proper announcement now. I will be doing a run of the Mordian Glory dice and there will be an opportunity for you guys to get your hands on those dice. Like with the t-shirts that I did about a year ago, this is just going to be a one-off thing, limited run. It's just you guys have been asking me about dice for a really long time, and I'm finally in a position where I where I can I can offer them. So the current uh, pricing is it's going to be about uh, one pound fifty, one pound per dice. Uh, obviously, the more people we get, the cheaper the dice will be. It's as simple as that. Uh, I'll be completely open with you guys about, uh, you know, costings and, and prices so you guys get an idea, you know, you can make your own minds up about whether you're getting a good deal or not. Um, but yeah, it's just an opportunity for you guys to get your hands on the Morning Glory dice. You have all seen them in my battle reports plenty of times. They are white dice, black spots with the, um, the grumpy sort of uh, guardsman face. Uh, on the six so the symbols will be on the sixes not on the ones uh, i will be getting these from uh the company dice.co.uk a uh, very simple name that says what's in the tin um and uh, i am going to do shipping to wherever in the world i'll offer it worldwide um it will just be again like the t-shirts uh it will be you know, if you want, if it will be more expensive, obviously postage, if it's going uh, international. Uh, the only there will be, I will go into more details with this in another video, um, but I will say that last time postage costs were quite high, simply because I I paid for the most expensive postage possible, and I and you guys were all fine with that. Um, I will offer it. I will consider offering it if you don't want to pay high postage costs and you want to go for the cheapest international postage costs you can get. Um, I will offer that, but the risk will then be, you know, it will be riskier. If they go missing, there's not much we can do. But we'll talk about that in much more detail in future videos. All I need from you guys now is for anyone who's interested in a dice, assuming of a price between one pound to one pound fifty per dice, uh, send me an email. There will be a, my email will be down in the description below. It's oddworldinhabitant1293 at gmail.com. Uh, there's a very history behind why it's not Mordian Glory, but we won't go into that now. And all you need to do is send me an email expressing your interest and a approximate number of dice you'd be interested in a lot of people who have contacted me already have said they want 20 dice 30 dice i think most people are going for a minimum of 20 but realistically you can have however many you want it's just um you know you, you'll be paying shipping on shipping will be pretty much mostly flat rate uh so the more dice you get the better the shipping will be roughly but anyway we'll go into a lot more detail later i appreciate we're five minutes into this video and i haven't even started talking about today's topic so without further ado let's crack on five minutes into the video jesus christ let's crack on with the main event which is the regiment review katachan regiment review that is what we were going to be doing today we have katachan pictures and we're going to be talking about katachans so 
As per normal, we will start off with a little bit of fluff about the Katachan Regiment because it's a full regiment review. So Katachans are one of the longest standing, most established regiments, regiments of renown within the Imperial Guard. Um, they, uh, Vostroyans are, are relatively recent, but Katachans have been around for a really, really long time. And their claim to fame is that they were the second and and last regiment to get plastic miniatures and in fact uh, games workshop now only sells cadian plastic miniatures and uh Katachan plastic miniatures for the guard and the only metal miniatures they still offer are the armageddon steel legion but the only the only bit you can get for this steel legion is is a single infantry squad Katachans have a relatively well fleshed out range so as much as it goes they've got special weapons they've got cat special characters they've got snipers they've got an infantry squad they've got a, a command squad um so yeah the catch range ranges it's it's old but it in terms of ig it's been pretty well treated and been kept pretty pretty well to date they've had uh multiple iterations of colonel ironhand strachan and of sly marbo uh so there we go um, in terms of uh, the fluff, the regiment, Katachans come from a death world, and they were the introduction of, of death worlds into, into 40k, really. Um, and what that means is that the planet is almost entirely inhospitable to human life. Everything there is a predator, is some sort of the, all, the, the, the wildlife, uh, the, the plants, the animals, they're all just horrible for humans to live around they all they all can prey on humans that's what a death world means and katachan is the quintessential death one it's a jungle world um heavily in uh the, the fluff behind katachan is heavily inspired by sort of vietnam war uh and sort of Bur burmese conflict um it's m the jungle is so thick that uh you know you can't squeeze between the trees and the fronds like you have to be an expert jungle fighter any any non katachan regiment that would put on to katachan would would die within a week it's it it would be that quick it would they'd just die um now normally death worlds aren't inhabited by the imperium unless they have some extremely viable resources simply because they're not worth it they are not worth it. There's very little return on a. Uh, you have to do a huge investment of manpower to, on a death world to get you know to get any sort of return. However, Katachan does not have any massive or useful natural resources yet. It is one of the most important worlds in the Imperium, and that is because the resource that Katachan has at its disposal isn't anything as mundane as some sort of mineral wealth or agri wealth it is it provides the thing that the imperium needs above all else and that is fighting men you see the people that survive on katachan are the toughest of the tough tougher than any hive world ganger tougher tougher than any sort of military world um martial soldier these guys are born survivors um most i think it's something like uh the infantile death rate on Katachan is above 50%. 50% of all children that are born die. Another 50% don't make it through the first first few years or become a teenager. It's extremely high. But those that do survive, those that do survive are incredibly hardcore. And the final test for any Katachan prospective guardsman is to outrun a katachan devil and a katachan devil is the apex predator on it on this quintessential death world uh and you only have to outrun it it's actually uh believed it's an offshoot of, of a tyranid organism that got stranded and then adapted to the planet um they are unbelievable killing machines and and every single katachan has had to survive and encounter one of those things outrun it outfight it they've had to so they're absolutely hardcore they're absolutely hardcore also <coughs> pardon me the um the gravity on katachan is a little higher 
than standard. And as a result, um, the muscles of the Catalans are extremely, they're extremely muscular, extremely well developed, because they've had they they've had to fight oh you know more than high, uh, uh, more than normal gravity. So so they're often referred to as baby ogrins. They're absolutely they're absolutely massive individuals. So that's the fluff. Um, Catalans of course love jungle warfare. A lot of their um, their strength comes in comes from field craft uh, they because of the nature of the jungle warfare that they're involved in their preferred special weapons are flamers they don't really have a preferred heavy weapon again simply because dragging heavy weapons through the jungle is not ideal they're also proficient close combat specialists uh, because they every single katachan has a large katachan knife which is double the size of a uh, standard issue imperial guard pig sticker and um as a minimum they have a kachan fang which is a machete essentially for use for cutting through undergrowth but also for getting up nice and close to the enemy um because the kachans are the masters of ambushing um in jungle warfare so uh and obviously the silent takedown as well. Catachans are good at that, so they use their knives for a lot of work. Most Catachans, if you give them a choice between taking a Lazgun into a fight and taking a Catachan Fang into a fight, every single time the Catachan's going to pick that Catachan Fang. It is an extension of his of his arm. And that, leading from the fluff into the rules, that is reflected in their rules. So, the Catachan Regiment trait is called Brutal Strength. Okay, uh, infantry units with this doctrine add one to their strength characteristic. In addition, they add one to their leadership characteristic if they are within six inches of friendly Catan officers. Each time a vehicle with this doctrine fires a ranged weapon that makes a random number of attacks, e.g. heavy d6, heavy 2d6, you can re-roll one of the dice used to determine the number of attacks made. So, three things. You get three bonuses here. You get bonuses to your infantry, bonuses to, with your officers, and bonuses to your vehicles. So straight away, you get a lot of uh, flexibility with this regiment. But all of those things that you get, this is the thing, all of those traits that you get are always in play. They're not situational. And as we've talked about in other regimental reviews, what separates the good regiments from the lower tier regiments and even the bad regiments is, is your trait situational or is it always in effect? And the fact that the Katachan, at least one part of the Katachan trait is always in effect, at least, often two, and in most games, three. So they have, they are, we're going we're gonna to preface this straight away, guys. They are considered to be one of the top tier competitive regiments. If you're going into a tournament, typically you'll see someone take Cadian or you'll see someone take Katachan. You, in a competitive list, the other regiments aren't even considered. So, the plus one strength is obviously really, really good. Uh, it, it's only to your close combat capabilities. It's not like strength four Lazgrims or anything like that. But strength four is huge. It means suddenly the amount of things that you're wounding on fives in the game is exponential. The only things you're not wounding on fives are things that are toughness eight, knight equivalent. Most enemy units out there, uh, their vehicles are toughness seven, or their hard hitters are toughness six, toughness seven, which means normal guardsmen wound them on sixes, but Kachan wound them on fives, which means they are extremely potent in close combat. The extra leadership is also fantastic. I mean, you're always going to have Katachan. You're always going to have company commanders. You're always going to have platoon commanders. You want those. Uh, they want those orders, and so as a result, Katachans almost universally have plus one leadership. So they've got. They do what Mordians do, but better. I would argue it's better because the Mordian thing is very restrictive. You have to have your guys basically base to base. Katachans don't. They can spread out nicely. And just have an officer within six inches of a unit. You can conga line back and still get your plus one leadership. Which is really, really effective. Uh, the vi But the big one is the vehicle one. Considering battle cannons are the most competitive 
weapon turret option for the Lehman Russ. And most people advocate the, the, the cheap and cheerful battle cannon heavy bolter basic loadout Lehman Russ. Uh, Katachans get extremely reliable tanks and artillery. Extremely reliable. You fire that basilisk. You get to, you've rolled two d six for your number of shots, and then you pick the highest. And then also, if neither of those are to your liking, you get to re-roll one of those dice. Absolutely fantastic. Catan artillery is extremely has extremely consistent uh, shot output. Every time that those tanks fire, you know, grinding advance, you fire it once, then you get to fire it again. You get to re-roll the d six. I believe you get to re-roll each dice. Correct me if I am wrong. It does say here. Each time a vehicle with this doctrine fires a ranged weapon that makes a number of attacks, random number of attacks. Each time with this doctrine, oh, it's a bit interesting. Each time a vehicle with this doctrine fires a ranged weapon with a random number of attacks. I mean, I would argue that it's you with grinding advance. You roll, you roll both dice. You get to roll both because with grinding advance, technically you fire once and then you have to fire again at the same target. You don't get an additional d6. I mean, we should read the ruling on that just to be uh, doubly sure. However, I believe, for some reason, I do believe people only re-roll one of the dice. Just, we'll just double-check it. Uh, if a model moves half its distance, it can shoot to a weapon twice. So you're shooting the weapon twice. So I would argue each time you shoot it. It's a difficult one. Let me know down. Any cast gen players out there, put it down in the comments below. If you're watching this video and you want to know do you re-roll both dice or re-roll one? Look in the comment section below. The answer will be clearly marked there. So that's, so which, you know, fantastic for Liam Russell. We don't need to go on about it much more. Now, the Katachans do have a unique regimental order, which is burn them out. So hacking their way through countless tangled death worlds has made the jungle fighters experts at flushing out foes with burning Prometheum. As we said, their favorite weapon is flamers. You can re-roll the dice when determining the number of attacks the ordered unit can make with flamers and heavy flamers until the end of the phase. <coughs> Pardon me. In addition, units targeted by models from the ordered unit with these weapons do not gain any of the bonus of their saving throws for being covered this phase. That's very interesting. That is very interesting. Um, it, you get the old flamer rule, ignore cover, which is great, and you get to have consistent, again, consistent number of dice coming out of that flamer. Um, that is quite interesting. Now, on a regular infantry squad, I don't see that being all that effective. I mean, you're going to have one flamer. You're probably going to want a first rank fire, second rank fire. Um, where I see this being incredibly effective is command squads. Jump out, four flamers. Normally you wouldn't want to put flamers on your command squads because you would be not taking advantage of the ballistic skill uh, 3 plus. But if you can get re-rolls on those dice, very good. Special weapon squads, very interesting. Uh, veteran squads. Now, now imagine this, you have a veteran squad. You've got three flamers. You could, In addition to that, you can take a heavy flame, so that's four flamers. You've only got six lasguns left at that point. Oh well, five lads guns and the and the sergeant's got a got a pistol. So realistically, you've only got five lads guns versus four flamers. Realistically, you, I if I was using Katachans and I was using these guys of some way of you know jumping out of a chimera and burning people, I would take shotguns on the on the veterans. I would have five guys five guys with uh with shotguns. I would have three uh, special weapon guys with flamers and a heavy flamer. And I'd have the siphon throwing a frag grenade. Or if you really want, give him a plasma pistol or something. I don't know. But that's how I would do it. That's how I would do it. Um, good. Yeah, no, it's got it's got its uses. It's got its uses for sure. Um, I'm trying to see. They don't have any other unique orders there. Yeah, they haven't got a tank order as well, have they? No. No, no, they've got they've got the regiment trait, they've got the order there. Now they do have uh unique units. They ha uh, you they have a uh, two unique characters. They have Cur uh, well, they have Marbo as well, but he's not in the codex. You've got Colonel Ironhand Strachan. 
uh, who is an additional company commander like model, which means Castellans can get three company commanders and they can get Strachan via the rule of three. So you sort of get to circumvent the rule of three. He can do, he can issue two orders, unlike Cree, who can issue three, he can issue two. He has a five plus invulnerable save. Um, he has been there, seen it, killed it. You can reroll failed wound rolls made for Colonel Ironhand Strachan in the fight phase of attacking enemy monsters. And he has Cold Steel and Courage. All models of friendly cast shine units within six inches of Colonel Ironhand Strachan at the start of the fight phase can make one additional attack each time they fight during that phase. That's really interesting. Isn't it? Because that means you can stack that with a priest, and each Catachan infantry model can have three attacks at strength four. Each sergeant can make three power weapon attacks or four chainsword attacks. That's a huge, that's really, really big. Um, I can tell you now that there are competitive lists built entirely around that. It's absolutely insane. It's a lot of attacks. Um, Colonel Stra where also do not forget you can combine uh, you can use fixed bayonets the ordered unit can be issued this order can only be issued like within one inch of enemy unit the ordered unit immediately fights as if it were the fight phase okay so this says at the start of each fight phase you can make one additional attack each time they fight during that phase this says you fight as if it was the fight phase. So how I read that is you get your additional attack with fixed bayonets. That's how I see it. Because it says during the fight phase. This is as if it were the fight phase. Seems pretty clear to me. So if you have a unit of Catachans in combat, you don't need to fall back. Because you can fix bayonets and fight in combat in the shooting phase and then fight again in the fight phase and you and that is better than first rank fire second rank fire las guns because that's 60 attacks at strength four versus well a lot well it's about the same with las guns but well it's 36 las gun shots plus your 30 strength four shots so you can have 36 strength 3 shots or 30 strength 4 attacks. I'd go for 30 strength 4 attacks. Typically. That's what I'd go for. Um, that's assuming you haven't got a flamer in there. Yeah, that's that's assuming uh, you haven't got a heavy weapon or a special weapon in the unit. You know, that's the maximum of last gun attacks. So, um, definitely. He, uh, Strachan himself, and I can just tell you, it, that's a very competitive build. Go and watch my Cali tournament review video. I got absolutely stomped in that by a close combat Katachan and Blood Angels army. It's a very competitive build, that. Strachan himself is no slouch in, uh, no slouch in combat. He has he hits on a 2+. plus. His basic skills, 3+. plus. He's strength, 6. He toughed us 4. He's got 5 wounds. There's one more wound even than Commissar Yarrick. Leash at night, he's got a 3 plus save because of all his bionics. He's armed with a plasma pistol, a shotgun, frag and crack grenades, and he has a bionic arm with devil's claw. Uh, plasma pistol is normal, shotgun's normal. The bionic arm, the devil's claw, is strength user, so strength 6. AP minus 1, 2 damage. So he's, it's it's beastie. So yeah, it, so Strachan has a 3 plus save, 5 plus invun, hits on 2s, and... Hits like an absolute train. Don't forget, Katachan, he has four attacks. He is a Katachan unit, so he actually has five attacks thanks to Cold Steel and Courage. And then, if you have a priest name, he gets six attacks. That's insane. That's absolutely insane. Um, you also have uh, another character as an elite choice, which is Sergeant Harker. Uh, sergeant Harker is he's, he's basically he's, a, he's like a veteran sergeant uh, weapon skill 3 plus physical skill 3 plus he's strength 4 like all cast chance but then that means he's actually strength 5 in combat yeah don't forget that's a good point because Strachan is also a cast chance unit isn't he which means Strachan his strength characteristic is actually 7 is that right he is strength 6 he has the Katachan keyword. 
He is an infantry model. So he is strength 7. That's insane. And uh, <laughs> that's really insane. And Harker is strength 5 when you take into account his uh, his Kachan trait, which is again amazing. Uh, he has 4 attacks in close combat. He's only got a 5 plus save. He has no invulnerable save. He comes with a heavy bolter called Payback. And it's like it's an, ass it's an Assault 3 heavy bolter. So he actually can move and shoot this with no penalty. So he's hitting on 3s. And it's AP minus 2. But it's damage 1. Strength 5. Um, he does come with crack grenades as well. Though why you'd ever use it. You'd always, in my opinion, use the, the heavy bolter. Uh... He has a special rule, Harker's Hellraisers. You can re-roll hit rolls of one in the shooting phase for friendly Katachan units with six inches of Harker's Hellraisers. So, ha so Katachans have got it all. They've got good close combat. They've got additional characters. They get to re-roll ones like Cadians. They get to re-roll random number of shots like Cadians. <coughs> Katachans have got it all. That's why they're probably the best regiment out there at the moment. Um... Yeah, absolutely fantastic. Now, it's only really one ones in the shooting phase in a close combat army. But think about that artillery we were talking about earlier. Think about the tanks we were talking about earlier. You know, now you you can have Harker let them reroll ones to hit. They don't need to use their uh, orders for gunners kill on sight. They can use for strike and shroud. Gives you tactical flexibility. Or if you put him with, uh, with artillery. Harker and Captain Artillery go together nicely. Um... So, the last thing to talk about, I believe, is the unique Katachan Relic. Because they do have one, and it's really cool. It's like an alternative to the uh, Blade of Conquest Relic. It is called the Mamorph Tusk Blade. This viscerally sharp blade was quenched in the blood of a shambling mammoth. It is said by the jungle fighters that the strength of that great beast, a mass of muscle and hair that can eviscerate an ogre with a single sweep of its oversized tusks, lives in the sword's edge. Catch that model with power sword only. The mammoth tusk blade replaces the model's power sword and has the following profile. Strength plus two, so obviously with catch chance that's plus three. AP minus three, damage two. Now... A lot of people will say, why would you take the Mamorph Tusk Blade over the Blade of Conquest? Because the Blade of Conquest is AP minus 4. The Mamorph Tusk Blade is only AP minus 3. The Blade of Conquest is D3 damage, potentially 3 damage. The Mamorph Tusk Blade is a flat 2 damage. Well, I would say this. Firstly, if you're using... if you putting this on a catching character who's, you know, and he gets into a duel with enemy characters, then the AP minus three doesn't really matter because most characters have an invulnerable save. And in this day and age, invulnerable save spam is everywhere. And actually what you want this for is for the flat damage too. Yeah, the D3 damage on the Blade of Conquest is great, but you want that flat damage too. You want the consistency. There's no ifs, ands or buts about it. You want the consistency. So the very last thing to talk about is the Katachan Warlord trait, lead from the front. Uh, Katachan officers dive into thick of the fray without hesitation, their blades and their teeth bared. Mortal enemies hold little fear for those who have fought the mega fauna of a death world jungle and survived. This warlord can perform a heroic intervention if, after the enemy has completed all their charred moves, they are within 6 inches of any enemy units. The warlord can move up to 6 inches when performing heroic intervention so long as they end the move close to the nearest enemy model. In addition, if your warlord charged, was charged, and performed heroic intervention until the end of the turn, you can reroll all failed hit rolls made for them. So, that's not great. That is the one weakness of the regiment. Because it's only your warlord that can perform the heroic intervention. So, if it was units around him, could also do it that would be amazing but it's not it's only him the reason you take this is simp if you were to take it is for the re-rolled hits <coughs> in the turn that you charge or were charged or perform the heroic intervention that's the reason you take it because you you know imagine 
I believe Strachan has that trait already. So Strachan's hitting on twos, re-rolling ones. And do you re-roll all wounds? No, it's just hit rolls. It's only hit rolls. It's okay. It's okay. It's not It's not great. It's okay. Um, you would only really take that for fluff purposes, from what I can see. So there we go, guys. That's the Katachan Regiment review. I think I've covered everything. It's extremely competitive. Uh, not much more to say about it, really. It's not got any weaknesses. It has all the best bits of every other regiment put in. It's got good leadership, good uh, good close combat capability. Uh, it's got good um, shooting capability. Absolutely fantastic regiment. Um, what, I, what I tend to see is if... Uh, if someone is taking a most a loyal thirty two, they'll typically take a Cadian one for the for them to shoot back, sit back and shoot. If people are taking a a mostly guard army to a tournament, like a they'll they'll go they'll go cast chance. The one of the best armies, one of the best tournament armies out there at the moment tournament winning that will beat elder flyers that will beat most of the armies out there is catachans admittedly with blood angels it's an imperium army but it is 90 percent catachans the blood angels just bring th uh, supreme command attachment and they just bring smash captains and libby dreadnoughts um that is the best army at the moment close combat catachans what you do is you have a lot of art, you have lots of wyverns, lots of mortars, uh, and then you take a, a whole load of uh, of Katachan infantry, and you just with priests and Strachan, you just bury the enemy in attacks, and you just move and advance and move, move, move and advance the turn, the first turn, and then next turn you just charge the enemy and you just overwhelm them. It's extremely powerful, extremely powerful, especially in the day and age of uh, bottom level of ruins block line of sight. So guys, let me know what you think. If I've missed anything, please put it down in the comments below. Uh, if you're interested in the dice, obviously please email me. And of course, I'll see you guys next time.